AIDS is not a monkey myth. The simian adenovirus combination is man-made. To understand the military's biowarfare program, understand gene therapy. It consists of the trigger virus, cell unit, virus envelope, and lipoprotein. The foundation of a biowarfare program is the cell packaging unit. There, the RNA manufactures a lipoprotein with a viral envelope, which will deliver the bioweapon payload or the toxin. Types of cell packaging units used in gene therapy are bacteria in civilian projects and mycoplasm in stealth war projects. Inside the cell packaging unit, RNA contains the codes, the long-term receptors, the packaging code, the gag code, the envelope code, and the polymerase code. Let's look closely at the genetic information contained in the cell packaging unit. The RNA protein contains the internal genetic codes to manufacture proteins for gene therapy. This is where we will store the information to create the bioweapon, poison, or toxin. Every good biowarfare weapon requires a trigger. Our trigger will be contained in the long-term receptor. The long-term receptor starts the RNA manufacture of proteins by the RNA. The trigger can be activated by a virus, a chemical, or radiation. Once the trigger is activated in the long-term receptor, the packaging code is engaged. We will trigger our packaging code with a herpes virus or Epstein-Barr virus, the two most commonly used. The long-term receptor will signal the packaging code to begin building the necessary proteins for the bioweapon or toxin. The packaging code will then initiate a series of codes to start the manufacture of necessary proteins for the bioweapon. A bioweapon toxin requires two proteins, an internal and external protein. The gag code is responsible for building the internal protein. The internal protein will induce the gene therapy desired for the bioweapon effect. The second necessary protein for a biotoxin is the external protein. The envelope code is responsible for the construction of the envelope protein that will target and protect the internal protein from destruction while it is deployed on its mission to alter the target cell. Now the internal protein and envelope protein are ready for assembly. The polymerase code assembles the internal proteins with the envelope for a complete protein to be used in gene therapy. The complete protein can be deployed in a military operation or in a civilian operation such as university research for AIDS, cancer, and diabetes. Let's take a closer look at the biotoxin protein. The protein consists of two parts, the envelope and the internal protein. Viral proteins are most commonly used. The envelope protein protects the internal protein and has glycoproteins to target the protein to a site. The glycoproteins enable the envelope to target specific site receptors and lock the envelope into the cell receptor of the target Cell. This is why viruses are so commonly used for the envelope proteins. Let's look closely at the internal protein. By removing the viral envelope, we can reveal the internal proteins. Universities across the nation use molds to remove this outer envelope to gain access to the internal proteins, which can mimic, block, or disrupt cellular functions. Whether we use a mycoplasm in military warfare or 
E. coli in university research, the cell packaging unit manufactures the proteins needed in gene therapy. The cell packaging unit will assemble a virus or a simple protein to target the cell for a desired function. Once the cell packaging unit is selected, the cell RNA codes are bioengineered. These RNA codes contain instructions for building proteins used in gene therapy. Bioengineering these codes, we can construct a virus or simple protein to alter a target cell's functions and produce a desired effect. Diabetes can be induced by using the adenovirus RNA sequence to block insulin. To construct a bioweapon toxin or protein, the envelope and gag codes will make the two proteins necessary, the protein envelope and the internal protein. The protein envelope and internal protein can then be assembled to produce a viral missile. This viral missile is assembled by the polymerase code. The polymerase code assembles the envelope and the internal proteins into a complete protein for cell export. Usually in nature, the cell is destroyed upon cell export. However, the military has found that the mycoplasm, a extremely old, ancient prokaryotic cell, is perfect for cell packaging. The complete protein is released from the cell or mycoplasm by the cell during the budding process. This budding process allows the cell to continue living and to continue producing the proteins without being destroyed. This is very essential for long-term gene therapy and for use in biowarfare. The success of any military biowarfare program or genetic research used at universities or medical facilities depends on the longevity of the cell packaging unit. The complete protein is released and the cell packaging unit continues to assemble the desired protein to target a specific cell site. A favorite combination in gene therapy is the simian virus envelope with your desired internal protein. The assembled protein targets a specific cell receptor using glycoproteins in the envelope, attaches and delivers the internal protein for gene therapy to alter the cell producing the desired effects. With today's technology, we can now combine different viral envelopes to produce a super viral envelope. The most common super viral envelopes in gene therapy are simian virus and adenovirus combinations. Adenoviruses are known as cold viruses. In 1976, the National Institute of Health documented one million people infected with a simian adenovirus that caused cancer. The National Institute of Health never reported the cancer-causing simian adenovirus influenza vaccines to the million victims. Millions of Americans are now infected with the simian adenovirus from vaccines. AIDS is not a monkey myth. The simian adenovirus combination is man-made and behind the AIDS epidemic. Amen.